today we will uh, we will speak to about a subject, a topic we we loved, uh, and we uh, worked around for a long time. Um, we will speak about federation uh, between uh, public cloud operators. Um, a couple of years ago, I started discussing this topic with uh, Matt Jarvis, who was uh, the head of uh, cloud infrastructure at Data Center. Data Center is a, uh, a public cloud provider, an OpenStack cloud, public cloud provider in the UK. And we started discussing how we could just join our forces to address some issues and some needs on the market, uh, just levering, leveraging each other's experience on the uh, public cloud um, business. So uh, we started this discussion and we started from a commercial and market standpoint and then we just uh, drilled down to the technical issues and then we ended up working, me and uh, someone draw a mustache on my, my face there and me and Simon Murray who is here with us today, I will be the front man uh, and uh, we, we started discussing how to uh, practically implement a federation. So how to overcome the issues we have faced uh, uh, and the, the needs we have uh, in the real world. So uh, first of all, let's start talking about what's public cloud uh, in the world and in Europe in, uh, specifically. So this is basically the situations with the big guys where you have all these regions uh, around the world run by basically three players, okay? They have uh, this kind of concentration and they have this uh, presence. They are very strong in the presence uh, everywhere, okay? If you can see in Europe, we have almost uh, eight, nine regions from the big players. And that's what's going on with, uh, with OpenStack, the OpenStack public clouds. They are way more than uh, the presence than the, that the big guys have, but it's not just three players. Each color you see is a player. By the way, this is data center, this is enter cloud suite, okay? This is TCP cloud and we have the French guys, uh, CloudWatt and uh, Numergy, and we have uh, City Cloud, etc. Memcache, Memset. Sorry. So the problem here is fragmentation. There is no single uh, solution for for this. Everyone is running its own game, facing the same issues on their local market, but not talking to each other. So we try to address this. Moreover. The Europe itself is trying to address this problem by providing tenders. Tenders are the way by which Europe funds uh, a solution to uh, common problems from the institutions specifically and then to the market. The main two tenders are the digit tender, which we won in 2015, which is intended to provide the institutions and the agencies with the public cloud services, which is basically on a multi-cloud approach model. We have Amazon, we have Azure, we have us with OpenStack, we have uh, VMware, etc. So it's everyone is free to choose. And the EFS approach, which is uh, another tender run by 20 of the 52 agencies, which is more a CMP approach. One single CMP to rule all the um, all the clouds, okay, and provide uh, YAS or PASS, etc. So, Europe, inst European institutions are trying to address this, this issue. Why you need federation? Basically because uh, it um, exploits competition. Competition is a nice word, which is uh, uh, cooperation between competitors, competition. Uh, we don't want to just fight each other. We want to fight the big guys because they are taking all the market. There's no point in fighting each other, especially in the OpenStack uh, community. We are friends, okay? Anyone running public clouds here is a friend, not a competitor. Um, we can provide the shared capacity. One thing we have seen so far is that the request for 
um, immediate capacity in bursts is increasing in over and over. So the, the typical approach from cloud or hosting providers is to provide step-by-step uh, -step increasing capacity. But if you get a very interesting customer like Nintendo we are with Pokemon Go, they run 1,000, uh, 100,000 servers for one week, and then they go away. How do you face it? You lose the customer, it's uh, one, one million dollars in one week. What do you do? You just say, no, sorry, I can't. So this is a way by which you can provide uh, immediate capacity. Provide improved resiliency. You provide failover regions. If you have one single region, you can ask to your competitors to provide additional regions with the same APIs, with the same standards. And this is the, the thing I, I, find, I find more difficult but more interesting. If you share your secrets, there's nothing thick, secret on the internet. There's nothing secret in open source. So let's face it, everything is uh, out there. You can just go and read it. So there are no secrets. If I talk about how I configure my Ceph or my Nova or my KVM or my Neutron, there's no secret. Everybody does it almost the same. So if we share the little improvements we have done, the sum of everything will bring us to this. 50% of something is better than 100% of nothing. And the current situation in Europe, it's that everybody is running their own race, okay, alone. And we are basically losing. OpenStack, so far, is private cloud. So, what is practically federation? I always say, the people working with me, I don't want to see ballet points in my slides. I know they are looking at me and judging me, but I, I had no way to, do, to solve this. So, basically, single sign-on. You have just one user, and you use that user, those credentials, to log into someone else's cloud. It's a seamless UX access, especially because it's supported by Horizon. So you can just choose your provider and switch to the other provider seamlessly. It allows every provider to maintain and to stick to their original product roadmap. No one has to change. I want to change the flavor of my instances. So all the federated uh, providers have to change it? No. There's no point in this. In the Italian market, maybe people want to have small machines. On the UK market, maybe they run Hadoop clusters and they want large machine. Let's stick to each other's plan. Back-to-back uh, -back billing. Uh, the customers are mine, even if they consume your resources. You provide me with resources, but the customer is mine. You don't see it. You cannot steal it because I trust you. But if, just in case, you cannot steal it. So. You just bill me, and I bill my customers. Silometer provides all the necessary tools. It's flexible to integrate, okay? Once I just can connect the identity providers and the resource, uh, it's very flexible. So it, um, what can I say, it saves the provider autonomy and provide market competitiveness. If I use a federate, if my customer choose to use my federated provider more than me, I have a market issue. He is doing my job better than me. I'm selling its services, I get a margin, but I have to learn from what he's doing because they are choosing his services instead of mine. So, this is uh, something I liked. Uh, uh, has anybody ever been in Hong Kong? Uh, in, in Hong Kong, this is, a, this is a skyscraper. Every scaffolding around houses and buildings is made with bamboo. Okay, when I, when I saw it the first time, I was amazed. Those guys build the entire scaffolding in bamboo. And it works, basically. This is a skyscraper entirely covered in bamboo. And people walk over like this. So, flexibility means resiliency. People trust this kind of flexibility. And this is uh, the typical engineer unicorn. Ah, oh, let's make the CMP and rule them all. Uh, let's define standard and they will obey us. No, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Multi-cloud is here to stay. Multiple APIs. 
even if they are different languages, but the layer at which they work is just a connector. I use Terraform, okay, I just plug a connector for AWS or for another OpenStack. In, in Federation, it's, it's just about changing some API calls. You don't need a CMP. So basically, Federation is about this. A user has a local provider, identity provider, and there's a local service provider. I think I have the light here, okay. Um, the user working locally authenticates and then uses the, consumes, consumes the services here. But in an ideal world, the two providers share the credential and information, the authentication and the tokens, and this user then is automatically allowed to consume services out there. Should be, but it's not working like this, okay? I like this. Uh, do you know this pair.com? Uh, it's the motivators. I love them. So failure, when your best just isn't good enough. So uh, I understand a lot of work has been done in, the, in Keystone to support these uh, domains and in federation and uh, interoperability, but basically it's still not working, not for Keystone itself, but the, for the integration for all the other services. So these are the problems basically. Uh, I won't go in technical details right now. Simon will answer to all of your uh, gory details questions you want to ask in, uh, later on. So um, domains and domain admins should be the way to do this, but actually if you open uh, something to a domain admin, admin, you actually open everything in, the, in your installation, in your keystone, okay? So when you list the resources, actually you are getting back all the list of all the resources. It means that the remote provider can see all the details of the customers of the local provider. And when you use policies, you cannot filter them because if you filter, the, list, the listing functionalities are not working anymore. So any management application you are using to just uh, account for the resources is not working anymore. So we had the uh, kind of, this is my favorite one, uh, the journey of a thousand miles sometimes ends very, very badly. And this is Solomon jumping in, I love it. Uh, so we had this kind of ambition uh, just to fix it. Because uh, in, the open, in the open star community especially, but in general in open source, when you have a, an issue, just roll up your sleeves and fix your problem. So we started working with uh, Simon. Actually, Simon did almost all the work you will see here, so uh, all the credit of this must go to him. Uh, the idea basically was to build uh, a small piece of software on top of each local provider so that the management of identities could be managed by, with admin users, could be used locally by the operator and, and uh, ruled by the operator. And so you, we didn't have to share any uh, credential that could be potentially opening all the um, privileges to remote users. So the operator is in charge of administering the local identity and they share credentials with privileged users. Okay, So the entire management of users, domains, roles, tenants is delegated to this p small piece of software. So this is a su success. Some people dream of success while other people live to crush those dreams and the picture is self-explanatory. So we are talking about this piece of software uh, we call Sentinel because of its job. So another bullet point, so I'm gonna be uh, beaten after this, uh, these slides. So basically it's a single WESGI status application. So you can provide privilege escalation without full admin rights, without full OpenStack admin rights. Uh, it provides entire management for the user, tenant, uh, roles, etc. You can do whatever you want. Works with the existing clients. It's a proxy for calls, so works with the OpenStack clients. Filters the collection of data, so you can choose what kind of uh, details you can show to the remote provider. It's written in Python, so it's very familiar for the OpenStack community. And to be seamlessly integrated requires OCAT Horizon, which is uh, 
pretty much available right now you know, on public clouds. So what we are going to do? Uh, we are going to build real world examples. We are building up, uh, I think in the uh, Sydney summit, we will have a de live demo of this. Uh, I talked uh, with the guys and they're interested in showing this. So we will build an integration between data center and uh, enter cloud suite to provide uh, shared resources. Uh, we want to foster the discussion uh, about public cloud federation. So far, federation has been mostly an academic issue. Universities are, have worked a lot of federation, but because the main hurdle was to have uh, uh, companies, enterprises share their secrets, share their resources, share, work together to build a shared market. We want to work actively in the community to push the domain scoping issue, the, the domain admin issue we have seen before, uh, back into the main tree. So we need to solve this. It has to be solved internally. Meanwhile, we need an external software. And we wish that anybody that wants to contribute to this uh, uh, development can join us. The, the software is uh, public and online. Uh, Simon is uh, not only a very good coder, also a very good technical writer. The documentation is very well written, so you can understand anything about what's in, what he's doing. So we think that at the end, working together with other public cloud providers, uh, each one pursuing their own goals, doesn't mean we cannot work together to just uh, address a market that is becoming more and more European and global. That's it. Thank you very much for staying with us.